Well, it's time now to look at the week in federal politics, and I'm joined by two members of the Parliamentary Press Gallery. Bob Fife is the Ottawa Bureau Chief for the Globe and Mail, and Mia Rapson is a national political reporter with the Canadian Press. Both of you, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Um, let's start with, I mean, it is a rare week when in federal politics, uh, the ouster of a federal political leader, Aaron O'Toole, Conservative Party leader, is taking back stage or back seat to another subject. But the protests that are paralyzing Ottawa really are where we have to start. The um, Ottawa police say they're expecting three to 400 more trucks uh, to attempt to get into the downtown core, one to 2,000 more foot uh, protesters. Uh, they say they still don't have control of the red zone, this downtown area, um, and there's no sign that it's going to end anytime soon. What do you make of the political response by the federal parties and the party leaders to this situation? Bob? Well, look, uh, I think the Conservative Party has been very irresponsible in throwing their uh, support uh, behind uh, these uh, truckers, uh, who, by the way, not all of them are, are truckers. The, the, the uh, Canadian Trucking Association, which represents most truckers, they say that their members are vaccinated and they don't support this. Um, you know, what's been going on, and maybe our, our viewers may not know unless you live in Ottawa, but these horns are going on all the time, all night. Um, there are people who are doing firecrackers at night where people are trying to sleep. Um, there's reports of them defecating on people's front yards. There's We know the, the Confederate flags have, brought, have, have been flying. Um, the swastika has been flying because there are a good number of white supremacists here as well. And it's come to the point where we've had to build a, um, a fence around the National War Monument uh, the, the real symbol of, of, of freedom and the, and the men and women who fought for our country. Uh, so there's a, there, the, the fact that the Conservative Party seems to think it's okay to get their pictures, or members of the Conservative Party MPs think it's okay to get their picture taken with these people um, and to support them um, is, to me, it's just bizarre. And you can, I imagine how they would like it if those truckers were outside their house with the, with the in their small communities with the horns blasting all the way. I mean, they, they would, I would, I would imagine they would uh, sing a different tune. Okay, Mia, there's reports that uh, today on Friday, the reports that in conversations earlier in the week, new interim conservative leader, uh, Candace Bergen, uh, has in discussions with Aaron O'Toole said that, you know, let's be, be clear that there are reasonable people on both sides of this issue. So she's making a plea for understanding of some of the protesters, at least. Um, what do you make of how it's, this has all been, been dealt with? It, it, to me, is indicative of what the Conservatives have been grappling with for the last several years, which is the rise of populism, both in Canada and also within the base of their party, and how they deal with that, how they address that, and how it doesn't tear their party apart, which at the moment, that it does seem to be happening. Aaron O'Toole, last week, uh, before he was ousted by the party, tr initially tried to keep a distance from this. He sort of could see that there was potential problems for them. Uh, and that decision, in some ways, was the final final nail for his leadership coffin because people were very angry that he wasn't going to meet with them, that he was trying to sort of keep his distance. Uh, and within a week, he was gone as uh, as leader. He did try to meet with them. He met with some of the people who were truckers away from the site. They sort of tried to keep that on the down low um, and sort of loosen any damage. But as he was doing that, members of the caucus were on the hill and unfortunately pictured with swastikas in the background, whether they were aware of that or not, they were warned that that could possibly happen. Happen. So this is it is a, the same problem the conservatives have grappled with throughout the pandemic as well. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't agree with the, the mandates. They don't agree with the public health restrictions. And those are the people that are on the Hill uh, right now. And they want they say they're going to be there until those are lifted. Uh, the problem for both the conservatives and to be quite honest, for Justin Trudeau and the liberals, most people in this country don't did, are okay with most of those things. They want the pandemic to end. They want to be able to go back to their normal lives, but they were okay with those restrictions while they were being imposed, our vaccine mandates, because they felt that that was what was going to get us to the end of this. And for Justin Trudeau, he's reacting the way he is and telling, you know, not meeting with them because he knows there's no votes to be had in that crowd for him. Yeah. He's absolutely aware the votes are actually with the people who are being bothered, not with the, the, the crowd. So 
Um, but at, at some point, people are also going to get so fed up that they do want to see action. They want to see something happen to bring this yeah. to an end. So perilous political paths for both parties yeah. in the next few days, to be honest. One of the interesting things to retain from the briefing by the police chief, the Ottawa police chief today on Friday, was that he was uh, stressing uh, he did not want to see a counter demonstration. There, he, he says they were getting estimates of up to a thousand people coming out to counter demonstrate. Uh, we've seen protests in front of the uh, the Ottawa police uh, station, the Ottawa central police offices, uh, by Ottawa citizens who are so angry. Uh, Bob, let's flip it on its head, though. Um, the Conservatives are saying that Justin Trudeau should somehow have been able to sit down with these protesters, or at least some of the representatives, and discuss things, to, to reach out, to reach out a hand. Well, well, and they, I mean, they say that he's called them marginal, and he's encouraged even more radicalism. Well, he, he may have been able to use different language, and I, I don't dis disagree with him on that. But these are people who uh, want the governor general and the unelected senator to overthrow the government. Um, we're not talking uh, sensible people here. And um, I know what, what's he going to? He's not. The government is not going to uh, get rid of the man, the vaccination mandates now, which, by the way, are imposed by the provinces. Mm -hmm. The federal government uh, has imposed them for uh, airlines and um, and the truckers and in question, yeah. and, and the tra yeah, and the transportation yeah. sector, and the border, but, yeah. and the border. But the mandates that a lot of them are complaining about were imposed by the provinces. And, you know, like, I agree with, with Mia, like, we're, we're all fed up with these um, restrictions, and, uh, and people don't want to have any more lockdowns. Yeah. The only reason we, we were stuck with the last lockdown is because there was a real concern that the healthcare system could not handle the surge of Omicron patients. Mm -hmm. And and this has been a long-standing problem in the healthcare system where we put need to put money in so that we have enough hospital beds and, and enough trained staff to be able to deal with these kind of crises. Okay, let's let's flip it uh, back. We'll go back to the Conservatives because you mentioned this. Um, what do you make of the fact that today we have Pierre Paul Hus, who's a prominent Quebec MP, speaking out, saying, look, these people should be told to go home and the streets of Ottawa should be cleared. We have Dennis uh, Patterson, a Conservative senator uh, from Nunavut, uh, now announcing he's going to sit in a different—he's uh, leaving the Conservative caucus, partly because of the Conservative support for these protesters. Do you think we're going to see more people, a, a progressively larger number of Conservative MPs, members of the caucus, speaking out, uh, having problems with their support for these, uh, these protesters? I, probably, I would, it wouldn't certainly it certainly wouldn't surprise me. Um, I mean, you also have the forty some odd conservatives who voted to keep Aaron O'Toole as leader, who are also wondering what their place is in the party at this point. So there are, you know, everybody on Wednesday, all of the MPs coming up, or almost all of them, were saying we're united, we're going forward. You know, we we will be fine after this. And in forty eight hours since, there has been no sign that there's any unity in that party, and it has just gotten a lot worse. Yeah. To be to be honest, uh, as you know, you've seen people leave. You see the MP. He's fighting publicly on Twitter. You know, it's not normal that you would see MPs from the same caucus taking each other on on social yeah. media about uh, Open about it. issues. But the emotions around this are high, and it would not surprise me to see more conservatives Open. coming out to, uh, on to, to join one side or the other of this debate in the next few okay, weeks. Okay, go ahead. And Mark, the Conservative Party is supposed to be the party of law and order, and here they are. It looks starting to look like there are some segments of it are morphing into. Uh, a Donald Trump um, populist party. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, has got to be of grave concern to uh, conservatives who, particularly on the center right, who uh, want to uh, present an alternative to uh, yeah. Mr. Trudeau, who they believe has taken the Liberal Party far to the left. And if, they, if the leadership race ends up being one where they're only playing to populist and the hard right, uh, that is going to make it very difficult, seems to me, for the Conservatives to be able to get elected. And they could, in fact, uh, allow the Liberals to have another decade okay. in power. Let's, uh, let's, um, I want to go to you, Mia, because you have followed scrupulously, uh, assiduously for two years, uh, this thing called COVID and this pandemic. Um, this week we saw, I mean, one of the theories is what happens next in the sense that we've got these protests springing up all over the country. They're being emboldened, one might argue, by their success here in Ottawa and occupying the downtown of the nation's capital, uh, and by comments from people like uh, uh, Scott Moe, the 
Saskatchewan Premier who's pledging to try and remove all vaccine mandates and all negative testing requirements by the end of this month. Uh, and the protesters are saying, See, look, here's the influence we're having. Look, they're following our requests. So what, where does this take this? Is it, I mean, we, Bob referred to the fact that we are moving away from, uh, from some of the measures. We're hopefully getting out of the pandemic. Uh, but at the same time, the protesters are seeing signs, they think, of success. For sure, and I think that that's one of the things that uh, the federal government obviously is seized with as well right now. They don't want to look at any in any way like they are caving to the demands of the people on the, the front step because, as some have suggested, this isn't really just a protest. It's an occupation, and it is, you know, people who are refusing to leave unless they get their way. And if the government gives in and, or appears to be giving in to any of their demands, uh, it will just embolden them further or embolden others to follow suit and do this when they don't like something that government has done. That said, you know, you heard the chief public health officer earlier today and the health minister talking about some of these uh, provisions, some of these restrictions. Some of them are going to be lifted anyway. I mean, Ontario had already planned to, yeah. to list, start lifting um, some of these measures on uh, Monday uh, before any of this had come up because that was their plan as the Omicron wave started to subside, they would start to open up again. Ironically, this protest is preventing some of the businesses that could have opened from opening themselves. So it's the, there's no government that really wants to be seen uh, as caving to these demands, but we're today seeing them arrive in more provincial capitals. Uh, there's protests in Toronto today, in Quebec City, in Winnipeg. And I think police forces and governments in every corner of this country have to look at what's happened, how to prevent this in the future, and really how to make decisions going forward that look like they are mm -hmm. evidence-based and are evidence-based and not because of demands of anybody uh, who's decided that they're going to sit outside okay. and, and, and their, blare their horn until they get their way. Okay, on that on that note, and before the horns start blaring again, I want to thank both of you. Obviously, uh, we may still be speaking about this occupation uh, in a few weeks' time. We'll see. Uh, listen, both of you, thank you very much. Have a, a good and safe weekend. You too. Thank you.